29 days to election 2020. Welcome to your election headquarters. This is John News at 6 with me, Bernice Abubeidulansa. The ballot paper is not for sale. It's an offense to sell or offer to sell a ballot paper to any person or purchase or offer to purchase a ballot paper from any person. Don't do this. The news is live on Joy 99.7 FM in Accra. Also live on Love 99.5 FM in Kumasi. Affiliates across Ghana, including Swiss 93.7 FM in Ho and worldwide at myjoyonline.com. Coming up. Not to allow themselves to be used to foment violence during the elections because if they do, the long arm of the law will catch up with them. IGP talks tough as he urges traditional leaders to advise their subjects against violence or face a ruthless clampdown. Meanwhile, police says it has identified 631 hotspots in the Volta region. We have details coming up shortly. And government cautions heads of ministries, departments and agencies they risk going to jail if they overspent their budget in the 2021 fiscal year. Meanwhile, government insists adequate structures are in place to check budget overruns for the first quarter of next year as concerns grow over rise in their stock. We've got details in business in 15 minutes. And government praises COVID-19 testing centers for the country's success in the fight against the pandemic. I think we've, we've done um, well because our labs didn't turn their back on us. Details as government takes delivery of significant quantity of PCR testing kits from MUDIC. Thanks for your company. The details now. The Inspector General of Police, James Apong Bueno, is charging traditional and opinion leaders to engage their subjects to desist from violence before, during, and after the December 7 elections. Mr. Apong Bueno said the police administration will not entertain any deviant act and lawlessness during this year's election. Addressing the press after a simulation exercise to test the preparedness of the Ghana Police Service, Mr. Apong Bueno hinted the police administration will ruthlessly deal with any anyone who engages in electoral violence. And I've appealed to them to always be talking to the youth in the communities, not to allow themselves to be used to foment violence during the elections. Because if they do, the long arm of the law will catch up with them. I've also assured them that we in the security services will do our best to ensure that there's peace on that day. And that everybody who has to vote, votes without any let or hindrance. At the same time, let me appeal to our officers and men in uniform that on the day of election, we should not be partisan, we should not be biased. Inspector General of Police James Opong Buenu there. Meanwhile, the service says a total of 631 polling stations have been identified as hotspots in the Volta region. According to the Deputy Regional Operations Commander, Superintendent Isaac Barr, the Keto South constituency tops the list with 85 hotspots, followed by North Tong and Ho West who have 73 and 67 respectively, and Law has 54 and Ho Central 44. He spoke at a training program on crime reporting for selected media practitioners in the region. Still on crime, Member of Parliament for Asawase, Alhaji Munta Kamubarak, is asking the Ghana Police Service to review the mode of operation of its anti-robbery unit to prevent it from degenerating into a Nigerian replica which has attracted recent public protests. According to him, the unit is being used to intimidate the public for no reason. He cites the killing of the Zongo 7, among others, as some of the excesses exhibited by the anti-robbery unit. He's been addressing the media in Kumasi a day after one of ten of his supporters arrested in front of his office by the unit was remanded into police custody. Into police custody. Nanaya Ojima has more in the following report. If you look at the way they look, shabbily dressed, some of them with dreadlocks, some of them unkept hair. If they were not holding guns and they were not in the police vehicle and you meet them by the roadside, your first assumption is that this person is a deviant. That's how you see them. Police everywhere are supposed to look decent and look encouraging to the society. We see that in Europe and America everywhere. Let the police tell us where they are getting this idea that the police anti-robbery unit will go out in operation without uniform. They are wielding guns. They maltreat their suspects. They sometimes abuse them. al Muntaka accuses the police anti-robbery unit of acting contrary to the professional code of the Ghana Police Service. He cites the killing of some seven persons to buttress his point. The method of operations of the anti-robbery unit needs to be looked at seriously by the police administration. We are seeing what is happening in Nigeria. 
and many parts of the world. It all started this way. And when the right-thinking Ghanaians kept quiet, it grew and became so abusive and so glaring. Now the abuse, is ha- it happens in their office. Or when they arrest people and nobody is watching, they, sh- they take them to a place and shoot and kill them. And I've cited the Zongo Service because that's an independent committee. It says so. That they were arrested and sent to a particular location and shot and killed. That's what Nanai Aljima with that report. Now, government is cautioning managers of ministries, departments, and agencies. They risk going to jail if they overspend their budget in the 2021 fiscal year. Government has requested approval for, from parliament to spend 27.4 billion CDs in the first quarter of 2021. 10 billion CDs of that amount will go into debt servicing. Deputy Finance Minister Kweku Kwating says government is committed, is committed to reducing the country's debt. I think we should focus more on going forward how we can rein in expenditure. And I have already indicated that we would urge our MDs to respect the ceilings we have given them. And in any case, we need to remember that under the PFMB, uh, if you overspend your budget, it's a jailable offense. We will continue to urge them so that so long as we live according to our projections, I am confident that we will rein in debt. You heard Deputy Finance Minister Kweku Kwating there. Government has praised COVID-19 testing centres in the country for their support in the fight against the pandemic. According to Dr. Okoboy, Deputy Health Minister, even though the three T's, tracing, testing and treating, were effective in the fight, testing centres did not neglect Ghanaians due to inadequate supplies of PPE. Speaking of the donation of some PCR testing kits and laboratory equipment by MODEC to four national COVID-19 testing centres, Dr. Okoboy said non-compliance of safety protocols is becoming alarming. Really, I think we've, we've done um, well because our labs didn't turn their back on us. Um, the policy of tracing, testing and treating has been very key to Ghana's success story. And let me say that the last time I checked, we had a national active case count of about 514 cases. Well, our objective still is to do zero active cases in the shortest possible time. And that will be possible with partnership like this, where we get the necessary items that are crucial in testing tracing and making sure that we keep a very safe environment. Dr. Okoboy is Deputy Health Minister. Now, women have limited access to communication gadgets, especially in rural Ghana, and uh, they've traditionally been involved in gathering, producing food, collecting water, and sourcing fuel for heating and cooking. Unfortunately, climate change is making the performance of these tasks difficult. One of the solutions is predicting weather patterns, mainly through radio weather forecast. However, more women have been found not to have access to communication gadgets at home. This is part of findings by the Environmental Science Department of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. On Tech Thursday, Lava Films Chrissy Debra speaks with lead scientist there, Professor Philip Inkiege. The study, conducted in the Upper East region, sought to assess based on information services for resilient agricultural systems in Ghana. Evidence suggests women are disproportionately impacted by climate change. The researchers also tried to find out how gender affect access to climate information. They found that more than 40% of women had no access to communication gadgets. Dr. Philip NJJ is lead scientist. Well, invariably, what happens is that in our society, men control most of the assets that are needed to address the effects of climate change. The capital assets, uh, land assets, um, natural assets, um, uh, financial assets, um, and physical assets that are needed 